Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. They are my absolute childhood heroes. So I sculpted them all. Hi, I am Zaydebi, and I turn people into figurines. For once, I have decided to get off my lazy ass and make an ultimate walkthrough of my entire creative process. So this isn't just a simple compilation of previous videos. I will be skipping the backstories of those videos. One of the coolest gifts I've received in a long time. So make sure to watch them after this. Ace Toys made these MMPR16 figures and they are great. But I am anal about accuracy, so I printed a new set of helmets for them. And they also did not provide stands for these figures. So my itchy fingers made them custom bases with holographic effects demonstrated in my Digivice Repaint video. Now, as a head sculptor, well, you already know what I'm gonna do. So that is done in a program called ZBrush. It's the Clean Freaks way of playing with clay because you get to walk away with clean hands after each sculpt and maybe a little sweaty if you can't get the likeness right but the best part is the ability to avoid this tragedy Die. likeness sculpting is a brainless activity no really because you can't rely on your imagination when you want to replicate someone's face in digital space you gotta gather references and you can either get them from a google search or take screenshots and sometimes if you're desperate, you might rent a random movie just for a few frames of your subject. Of course, I'm not a professional, so if you want to learn likeness sculpting, please refer to Frank Zeng or Jose Ndiba. Billy was the first that I sculpted because he had sharp features which helped my poor eyes recognize the landmarks on the face better. But I got cocky and attempted Trini next, which was a failure because female faces are generally less pronounced and Asian eyes are quite, you know, different. So when that failed, I had to re-sculpt her. I decided to incorporate a wig, but the wig sucked. Anyway, my third sculpt was Zack, and he was such an expressive character that there aren't enough neutral references. Kim wasn't better either, but after much struggle, I settled with this. Fortunately, Jason and Tommy's sculpts went pretty smoothly. Now it's the matter of turning them into tangible objects, but there is a lot to prep before printing. First, you gotta isolate the head and jam a pole into it. Just think of it as a neck connection space. And then you send this prepped model into a program called Mesh Mixer. Because the head is now a solid piece, but with the hollowing function of this program, we can use less materials to print it and thus saving us money. Speaking of money, please consider liking the video because it does not cost you any, but will help me greatly. Now that it's hollowed out, we sent it to another program called Preform to generate support. These are support structures that are necessary to prevent the head from falling while printing. And after that is done, we can finally print. Each print takes about 10 hours to complete, so I usually print before I go to bed. And the next day will be like Christmas morning, waking up to a freshly baked head sculpt of our own creation. The printer I am using is Form 3 from Form Labs. It's just so reliable that I could sleep in peace while it's printing and fully expect a flawless print the next morning. So if you have the dough, give it a go. Okay, enough ass kissing, not like they will ever watch this anyway. But after printing, there is still quite a lot to do before we can add life to the scalps. Remember the supports? Yeah. We gotta snip them off and clean the resin residues off with 99% IPA. Just like brushing your teeth, we want to get into the nooks and crannies of our head scalps to remove uncured resin. Otherwise, dust will stick to it and your paint won't. To make sure that the prints are fully cured, it is recommended that you put them under UV light to further cure them. I'm not 100% sure if it's necessary, but I don't want their noses to drop while I'm handling them, right? <laughs> well, are you bored yet? Because I am. But there is one last step before we can paint them, and that is to smooth out airy imperfections caused by the support. You see, when snipping them off, sometimes you might leave artifacts on the scalp itself, so you gotta sand it off. And it's better to prime it grey so as to make the flaws more visible. Alright, this will be the first and only time I say this, so savour it. But you can skip this portion if you're only interested in the painting process. 
but I will hate you. Nah, I'm just kidding. But if you want to know how to create duplicates of this hate, let's get to it. There are two ways of making it more that I know of, and I've experimented with both when I was creating these Power Rangers. The first one is more straightforward. You prop your prints up with some wooden stakes and surround it with a wall of Legos. Or anything you want really, you can even use your phone. Then you pour silicone into it to create the mold. This method actually created a problem in the form of air pockets, which got stuck in the neck connection space we made digitally just now. So in order to counter that issue, I flipped the print upside down before pouring the silicone. And now the air can escape easily and we get to preserve that neck hole. So that's already two ways of making a mold, right? No. That is just another variation of a one-part mold. We still got a two-part mold. But why do we need a two-parter? Well, it's harder to remove a print from a one-part mold because we've got to cut an opening. And the rigidness of the silicone makes it hard to remove a cast as well, especially if it's hot. <sighs> so for easy removal in the future, we gotta suffer first. A two-part mold requires a lot of steps to achieve. First, you gotta bury the head in a bed of clay and mark out the center point of where you want the mold to separate. Then poke some holes into the clay because that is what will hold the two parts together. Now pour in the silicone and you are only halfway done. Now that the first part is cured, we flip over and remove the clay. And if you think that the next step is to pour in the remaining silicone, you are going to cry at the end of the day cause silicone sticks to nothing but silicone. The two parts will bond together creating a one part mold instead, rendering your previous efforts moot. So we got Vaseline. It creates a barrier to prevent the bonding. So once you've applied a generous coat of Vaseline, apply another. No such thing as too much Vaseline. Better safe than sorry. But after the second part is cured, you can see why you might consider working harder for an easier remover. Now that the molds are finally empty, we can fill them up with some resin. It's really just pouring liquid into a hole after stirring them up real nice. That's it. If your mold is well done, your cast will come out perfect. And we can finally paint. So if you skip straight over to this portion of the video, good for you. Anyway, my painting teacher is Jacob from Patreon and he uses acrylic paint to add colors to the heads. I don't think an airbrush is necessary, but it definitely makes the paint more evened out. After laying a base coat of beige, you want to add some blush so that your subjects don't look like a zombie. Well, painting is really just adding a series of colors over one another to achieve a realistic skin tone. I'm not good at it, so head over to his Patreon for an actual lesson. But the general guideline is to accentuate the various shapes of the face with different colored paints such as tans, umber, and smokes. For hair, just paint it the color you want. For the details of eyebrows and eyes, I like to use this super thin brush by Tamiya. It's a lifesaver really. For eyes, mark out the iris with brown, and that will be the border. Color the insides with the respective colors and add in the pupil. And finally, you can gloss it to make it shine. So that's everything you need to know from creating a head in digital space to making it into a finished painted piece for your own figures. There are other customization techniques like hair rooting, silicone body painting, and mods that aren't covered in this video. So please feel free to browse my channel after this. Here's a playlist and do consider subscribing. See you next time.